Welcome everybody, I'm really excited today to play my second Blitz and Talk YouTuber special, also known as Dual Commentary and my opponent today is my fellow YouTuber, international master Greg Shahid. So what we'll do in just a moment, we'll play two games, two four minute plus two second games on Chess24, here we are right now, by the way, if you're wondering why looks a little bit weird I don't know I think something about my browser settings don't allow me to see the pictures but it doesn't matter we can still play and I just noticed I don't know his name so I hope um, <laughs> I hope I'll just find him. let's let's just put in Greg Shahade I hope he picked this as his name if he didn't or curtains is his name I think so let's, let's find this real quick and um, curtains there he is that should be him yep and I'll challenge him for 4 plus 2 unrated and there we go and at the same time there's a special thing about this YouTuber special he is also recording a video he's also having a huge YouTube channel with over a thousand videos pretty much of him playing plits of him recording videos at tournaments and um, so you can definitely check out his video as well after this one so let's just see if everything looks right looks great let's go I'm playing with the white pieces first and I start the game with e2 to e4 and let's go for a little fun here why not play the king's gambit and see what happens just feeling a little bit adventurous today. Okay, he takes this pawn, I play knight f3. d5, yeah, this is probably the most solid option to play against the king's gambit. Black is giving back the pawn early, but by doing so, he's really um, fin he's <coughs> finishing his development. Knight takes d5, now I castle do you play bishop b3 first i think i castle and here are two moves bishop e7 and bishop e6 bishop e6 is the better move um i think after bishop e7 or it gets a little bit of something he plays bishop e6 and now c5 is the move adams played against nakamura i hope he doesn't know this move because then well, it really doesn't have much and now oh he plays c5 he's on top of everything here yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why King's Gambit um, is not that great in Mook because Black is having this option here to play like that and he's finding all the right moves here. Um, if I remember correctly now, King H1. Yeah, and this is just uh, equal. So he managed to equalize here without any further problems, but still, it's it's okay for both sides. Um, but not exactly what I hoped for when I chose the King's Gambit here. So now I expect him to castle, then I can win back the pawn on f4, and not too much has happened. Um, so I'll t take on d5, or do I take on f4 immediately? That's a question here. Let's see six, queen f2, take, 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 take. Mm, I'll take immediately. He's he's gonna go knight c6, I'll go back to f2, and then probably he's gonna grab the bishop on f4. And, well, still, there's a lot of potential still in the game, so it's not a dead draw, obviously. And it's a blitz game, so everything can happen and position is roughly equal, I would say. Okay, he takes this one, he probably will take this one as well. At least I have maybe something on the open A file, maybe, um, I don't know. Knight d4 probably doesn't work too well because of rook d1, maybe knight e6 or something like that. Um, I probably maybe queen d4 is a good move. Or somehow play the queen somewhere. Yeah, he plays queen d4 and attacks the pawn on b2. 
So I'll bring out my last minor piece. He will probably exchange queens or something like that, or maybe not. Maybe play something like a6. And then I have to come up with something. What am I going to do? He exchanges. Probably wants to enter now with rook fd8 and rook d2. Rook a8, of course, that's also very possible. And I don't want him to enter here on um, d2. So I guess I gotta play rook f2 or knight e4. These are my two options right now. Knight e4 runs maybe into knight d4. So I guess I'll just go with the solid move here, rook f2. Probably black is already slightly more comfortable here. Um, I'll get some space for my king. But at least I'm up on the clock, so <laughs> that's that's my little advantage here. And now, can I cause some problems somehow? I want to improve my knight, so I play knight a4, aiming to go to c5. He can easily prevent it by playing something like rook e5, and he does. Yeah, that's a little problem, but maybe now c3. Uh, c3, b5 would just lose the knight, so that's not a good idea. Um, that means I have nothing better but to play something else. Let's bring the king closer to the center. He does the same thing. And well, I don't see really a good plan for me. I think I, at this point I can just, I can only just wait and um, defend pretty much. I think my position is defendable, it's a little bit a little bit unpleasant. Rook d4. This is kind of prompting me to play c3 followed by b4. I'm still not sure if this is any good. Um, but it is, it is an option. c3, rook d3, b4, b6. This is the, this is the main problem. And I don't know, I don't like it. I'll just play my knight back. My knight would end up in a really awkward position on a4, so I don't like that. I think it's time to exchange a pair of rooks. By which pair? Uh, rook a4, you could also play knight b4. Um, so I don't know if that's a good idea. So I guess I'll exchange this rook with rook d1. Try to take some material off the board. Um, he plays h5. Okay, I take and play rook d2. And see if I can do something here. Okay, king f2. Maybe I have the idea to enter now with rook d7. He will probably play rook e7 then, of course. Um, this might really peter out to a draw. Um, plays rook e7 now. Well, at least I can put my knight on a nice square now, knight d5, and secure it with c4. So why why not do this? Knight e7, I can bring my king. Place h4, makes sense to fix my pawns here. I bring my king closer, king f3. g5. I'll just continue to bring my king, let's see what happens. And this is slowly getting more interesting. It's going to sharpen up a little bit. I really like my knight on d5. I don't like that I'm a little bit low on time. But I like my king. And the rook is kind of dominated by a knight. I have options with rook f2. Um, rook f2, f5. 
Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Rook f2, f5, king e5. Let's penetrate his position more or less and see if I can get somewhere. All right, here we go. If he plays rook d8, I can go for knight e7 and pick up this pawn. And I don't know what else he's going to do. Rook f7. Okay, I'll just bring my king closer. Why not? And now knight e7 is once again a threat. Knight e4, rook takes f5, knight c5, check. That's unfortunate. He plays f4. He can do that. And what do I do now? Can I improve my position in any way? Um... Knight e7 check. But really, the time is getting low, and um, I want to activate my rook. Ah, still knight e4, I can play rook d7. And I have to be careful that I don't drop any material right now. Rook d8. Now you can already make a perpetual of knight c5 and knight e4, um, but he might go for more. He's better on time, so he might go for more here. Okay, he gives a check. He gives another check. Well, I can't do anything else here. I could play king d5. No, I shouldn't do that. And he goes for more. Okay, all right. Here we go. Could give another check. I'll do that. And then go back, threaten checkmate. Okay. Could also go rook h8, doesn't really change anything. And that's a draw. Alright. Still Pretty exciting, I would say. I mean, because also we we're pretty low on time. I felt like that at some point I got a little edge in the end game, but um, then it kind of slipped away when I had my king in this active position here. I don't know. It's kind of difficult to get through. Maybe I should rather go for something like. Oh, maybe I should. Oh, king c5. I shouldn't do that. Yes, knight is also kind of in a good position here. Maybe the logical result in this position is simply a draw. But still some excitement. And I'm really looking forward to the next game, which will happen right now. Then I'll play with the black pieces, obviously. So I'll go ahead and challenge him once again. And... He's probably right now also talking a little bit about the game. And then in just a moment, he will accept my challenge and we'll just wait a couple of moments. He knew his theory well. What can you do? I tried to make it really sharp with the King's Gambit, but he knew exactly what he was doing. He was following a line which is known to be really solid with C5. And then, well, then what can you do? And at least I achieved equality, I think so. But um, in the end, not more than that. I didn't really have the kind of positions that you want to get off the King's Gambit where you sacrifice material and all that. So that's unfortunate. But he was well prepared and he knew his stuff. So chapeau to him. And now we're waiting on him to continue. I'll write maybe a little message down here in the chat. I don't think you can see it right now, but I let him know that I'm ready um, for the second game. That's maybe the only difficulty sometimes to synchronize yourself with the other YouTuber because he's also recording and he's probably going over this maybe in a little bit more detail. 
I didn't really know what else to say about this this game. Um, I felt he was actually a little bit better earlier. Mm, around here, this looks pretty decent with rook on e5. But the thing is that after rook d2, I can kick the knight out of this great position. And then I get my knight in on d5, like I did in the game. Maybe rook e7 was not perfect here. But and anyway, I think it never left um, equality. Okay, now he accepted and we're back. Here we go. He has started the game with e4. And I'll answer with my favorite opening, the knight off. So let's see what he got against that. Bishop e3 and I play a little rear line here, knight bd7, the main move, so e6, e5 and knight g4. But this is interesting. I'll just like to maybe surprise him a little bit here with knight bd7. And the idea is that oftentimes the pawn can go to e5 in one move. Alright, so what's happening here? I can go for b4, he goes for knight d5, I assume, okay, he does. And now this, this is going to be interesting, I think, early on. Now I attack the pawn on d5, and I would like to exchange the pawn on b4 against this really strong pawn on d5. But I don't think he can keep it either way, because if he moves the knight, let's say to b3, or maybe to f, uh, maybe not to f5, but then I'll just play knight f6, attack this pawn again, and he's having big difficulties to defend it. So <coughs> I think I'm doing fairly well here. Now the question is how do I set up my pieces? Maybe g6 is reasonable. Just a little bit afraid to play something like knight b5 and then queen d4. Ah, it doesn't work because of knight f6, so I can go for that. I was thinking queen d4 then would be a double attack on the bishop on, and rook, but it simply doesn't work, and so I can develop like that, and I think I have quite a decent position at this point. Okay, so my next move is going to be castle. He plays c3, doesn't do much. Rook b8 is also a move I can play rather soon. Um, I could have played it already, but it doesn't run away really. And then knight c5. It's really easy for me to play. I can think about e5. He plays queen a3 already back. Makes sense. Knight e5 looks nice to go to c4 and grab the bishop pair. I always like to play with the bishop pair, so let's just collect one bishop here. And now I can follow up with e5 and d5, something along these lines. I have to be a little bit careful that b3 is not annoying. Maybe I'll just play rook b8 just to take b3 out of position because then I can take on d4 and take on b3. And e5, d5 is always a plan I have. He plays b4. Now at least I don't have to worry about e5, uh, b3 anymore. So now I can push my pawns. e5 and d5 is next. And maybe f5, who knows. Knight b3. Uh, maybe d5 is not next. I would give him this nice square for his knight. So got to come up with something else here. Hmm. Well, I'll play f5 first and see what he is up to. I have a really nice pawn center here, obviously, and really strong bishop on c4. I actually noticed I could have still played d5, and he plays knight c5. I can further push with d4, but I just didn't want to give him the square on c5, so this was my rationale why. Went for another move, even though f5, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next. 
But I think for him it's also kind of difficult to find a plan. He plays a5, but this is also taking away the square for the knight. So now I could think about maybe putting some pressure on this pawn. So let's try to do that. Um, let's see what's the best way to do it. Bishop goes back here. And he plays this move. And now, you know what? I'll try to to cause some trouble here. Play queen c4, then knight e2, queen d3. And now f4 is a threat. And the queen is really unpleasant um, at this, on this square for him. He just plays knight f1. Now threatens rook d1. Hmm. So I guess I've got to... <laughs> I gotta retreat again, but his knight is way more passive now on f1, it's not really participating in the game, so I've achieved something here, I would say. I think at some point I gotta play with d5, I just don't want to give him that square, but I think if I want to make any progress, I gotta do it sooner or later. Okay, rook d8. The other rook goes to c8. Still very comfortable for me to play. His plan is difficult. What's his plan? He doesn't have, um, I think, a lot of ideas. This is a pretty good move. Mm, rook d7 is obvious. And knight e3. Ah, yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Um, but I think I got him here with rook takes b6 and he's in this pin and I think I got him here I think I I'm getting a really nice position now because now f4 is coming and um, oh c5 is coming too uh oh Maybe I messed up c4. I didn't see that. Okay. How am I going to deal with that? I have an idea. It's a little bit crazy. But I think it's my best shot. Bishop h6. And if he take if he plays c5, I take. And rook takes d7, c takes before attacking his queen. I hope it works. It might not. Uh, it might not because he has rook c8 and uh, rook takes f7 something along these lines and then he might checkmate me um, oh 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 this is going to be really sharp right now I don't know what's going on um, I feel like he plays this move this this might be also a really good move, honestly. I want to exchange queens and then play king of six, but he plays rook f8 and he's still going to win my bishop. I think that's game. I think uh, that's, that's over. Okay, well, I'll try on. Uh, exchange queens but what next king f6 rook f8 is painful but I could push maybe the pawn immediately does it change anything no still rook c7 he's he's in time okay I gotta try that though Um, well, I'll okay. I still have some hope here. I still have some hope. If I see it correctly, he plays rook b7. Ah, this is how I do it. He does it. Yeah. Okay. Now this was. Okay. Now it's over. Okay.
Yep. Well played. Well played. And now it's over. Okay, this was much more exciting. Um, so let's have a quick look. Congratulations, first of all, to Greg. Played a good, good game here. I thought I was winning and then I just missed this one move, c4, c5, and then it's just not winning, probably just losing. Or maybe not losing, but the way I played, it was definitely losing. So let's have a look here. c4, is there anything else I can do? I could play f4, but now that's the problem here. c5 is coming and um, yeah, I mean, it can go back, but now he just moves his knight, let's say, to go to d5. Well, probably not to d5 because if he takes c5. I oh, know, even this is possible, knight d5, and if I play d takes e5, he. Oh, no, he doesn't have knight f6. Oh, the, the rook is protected anyway. So now he couldn't do that. Um, yeah, maybe I should go for something like that, because here... Yeah, but still, what what if you place the knight somewhere else? Um, let's say c4. Or g, let's say g4. But okay. The game is at least continuing, however, clearly I'm worse. So I can play rook takes b6. I should play d5. And I think my position is still very comfortable here. Very comfortable. Um, rook takes b6 is probably still not a threat because he could still do the same thing. But maybe I play f4, maybe I play d4. Very good chances. I saw this opportunity of playing rook takes b6 and was getting too excited, played it too fast and missed this option c4 followed by c5. Um, then in the game, let's have a quick look. Yeah, exchange here, king f1. Um, yeah, king f6, like I said, he plays rook f8 and that's it. If I could keep the bishop, this bishop on f7, still maybe it could still um, cause him some headaches but I I just can't I mean bishop b6 no, it just doesn't change anything rook b8 followed by rook b7 mm, and in the game b3 rook g7 check um, king h8 also doesn't change anything he takes and same idea here he gives one more check very precise and then he goes back threatens mate keeps everything protected. I was thinking I could still um, achieve something like that. If he has to play rook b7 immediately, I queen and then I get the rook and this is a draw, I'm pretty sure. Or at least I have really good chances. But this was the last detail and he found it and played really precisely. And congratulations to Greg. All right, so make sure to check out his videos as well to see it out of his perspective. I'm sure he was really happy to to find all these moves in the end here to um, be precise and win in this fashion. So go to his channel, you will also find the videos somewhere up here. Um, just click on them or click on the description and on them and then check out his channel. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe to his channel. I'll see you next time. I really hope you like this kind of special and see you soon. Bye.